Today, uh, we will talk about Hyperloop, but evaluate in a different aspect. Uh, at present, there is a new transportation concept called Hyperloop. This concept is introduced as the most efficient transportation system ever being developed. Let me introduce briefly what Hyperloop is first. Hyperloop is a high-speed and magnetically levitated transportation system in which specialized pods are accelerated through a low-pressure tube to achieve the speeds as high as possible. Should we create this infrastructure on Mars as Ellen the Creator does? What do you think, Batu? Well, Hakan, I don't know about Mars, but we're still on Earth and there are many, many improvements being done on Hyperloop on our beautiful planet. This concept is intended to provide a more environmentally friendly, cost-effective and faster mode of travel between cities across the world. Therefore, Hyperloop is a major and fast-growing interest for companies such as Virgin Hyperloop, SpaceX and Hyperloop Transportation Technologies aiming to connect the world in minutes. So, Hyperloop has been delved into during the talks, including TEDx talks, plenty of times in the past. Uh, unlike other talks, we will depict, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, we will depict a new and possibly viable theory that we are currently working on as the Hyperloop Manchester team. Today, we will talk about how to make this most efficient transportation concept even more efficient. This theory is not proved and currently at the beginning of the research phase, performing, performing by the University of Manchester and Hyperloop Manchester team uh, students, consulting with Nixon Publishing for advanced information guidance. Uh, we strongly think that the key to achieving this goal is implementing graphene compound into the Hyperloop application. We will talk about how to do that in a bit. However, before that, let me introduce you what graphene is in essence. So, graphene is an extremely electrically conductive form of elemental carbon that is composed of a single flat sheet of carbon atoms arranged in a repeating hexagonal lattice. Another structure of um, carbon is graphite, where the carbon atoms are laid out and stacked up in atomic layers. One atomic layer of graphite is graphene. Graphene is only one atom thick. Therefore, it has amazing features, which will be depicted later on in this talk. Graphene also can be produced by various sources, such as biomass. Graphene is a non-metal allotrope of carbon. However, it's known as a quasi metal since its features are like that of semiconducting metal. It is important to comprehend the history of the development of graphene. In 1859, Sir Benjamin Collins Brody an English scientist, explored the highly lamellar structure of thermally reduced graphite oxide. A couple of decades later, in 1916, the structure of graphite was identified by using powder diffraction, which is a scientific method using X-ray, neutronal electron diffraction on powder or microcrystalline samples for structural characterization of mater materials. This was studied in detail by German scientist Karl Schutter and Heine two years later in 1918. Almost a century later, after Sir Benjamin Brody, in 1947, as a starting point for comprehending the electronic properties of three-dimensional graphite, single-layer graphene was discovered theoretically by Pierre Wallace. Even though he was aware of the existence of graphene, which is one atom thick and two dimensional crystal, no one has worked on how to extract this from graphite until 2004. In 2004, graphene was isolated by two researchers at our own university, the University of Manchester, who are Professor Andre Geim and Professor Konstantin Novoselov, and they won the Nobel Prize for their achievement. These two brilliant scientists removed some flakes from a lump of bulk graphite with just common sticky tape. They noticed that some flakes were thinner than others. Eventually, they managed to create flakes that were just one atom thick by separating the graphite atomic layers iteratively. Graphene is a disruptive, innovative technology, one that 
could create new markets and even replace existing technologies and materials. The vast number of products, processes, and industries for which graphene create a prominent impact all stems from its amazing features. Today, graphene is being used in plenty of applications worldwide, such as biomedical applications, composites and coating, electronics, and sensors without PCB, but only using graphene ink, membranes, solar panels, and battery energy, which is what we are concerning today. Graphene is much stronger than steel, also incredibly light and flexible. It's electrically and thermally conductive, but also transparent. Graphene conducts heat two times better than a diamond, and its electrically uh, and its electrical conductivity is around 13 times better than a copper. It's the world's first 2D material and is one million times thinner than the diameter of a single human hair. Overall, it contains extremes in many aspects. All these properties of graphene lead us to our idea that we mainly talk about today. So what is our idea? The goal that we want to achieve with our idea is to implement graphene into Hyperloop concept in a way that there is no need to use battery pack, but only graphene layers in the chassis of Hyperloop pod. All in all, our target is to make chassis the power source of the pod by using graphene, since it is way lighter and more conductive than most of the materials available. Therefore, this will decrease the weight of the pod significantly and open more spaces for more passengers and increase the acceleration performance of the pod. The reason why we think that it might be viable for the Hyperloop concept, Hyperloop concept is the fact that graphene also can be used as a supercapacitor. Graphene has shown the most potential in supercapacitors as they can be used in the carbon coating on the capacitor place to form an efficient electrical double layer coating. These supercapacitors can be used to store large amounts of energy. There are some problems with the current battery technologies though. The use of graphene that we are covering today to implement into Hyperloop improves the solution to these battery problems. For instance, current lithium ion battery technology is not suitable for the growing energy demand of new devices, unfortunately. Modern devices have a long charging time and short lifespan and also contain unstable and risky chemistries inside. Thanks to the almost perfect electrical conductivity of graphene, it can increase battery efficiency, improve the power capability, and allow faster and safer charging. Furthermore, the high thermal conductivity of graphene helps to remove the heat from devices, improving safety by reducing the risk of thermal runaway. So, how can graphene can be used uh, in energy storage and possibly integrated into the hyper transportation concept. Graphene could help to store large amounts of energy for later use, yes, but how? Supercapacitors can give short and sharp bursts of energy. Developing graphene supercapacitors could help to enable high performance vehicles such as electric cars or Hyperloop in our case. The only drawback though of the supercapacitor concept that we are working on and, uh, and is the uh, on is the fact that they can be charged but also discharged very quickly. This is this is this is the problem that we are aiming to solve uh, right now in the team. Uh, thus, uh, we are currently planning to work on creating a supercapacitor structure in layers of hyperloop shell. We are working on placing sufficient amount of graphene supercapacitors as layers in outer shell and cover the outer part with an isolator and the isolator layer with carbon fiber at the utmost level of the outer shell. Since the shell will be layered, the time and effort will be spent more than the normal chassis integration process, but plenty of benefits will be gained from this application. Let us have a look at the high level graphene supercapacitor structure in the next slide. The supercapacitor is a valuable concept in electronics since supercapacitors can store up over 100 times more than standard capacitors. 
One of the main properties of a supercapacitance material is the ability to form double electric layers. Supercapacitors work by accumulating the charges at the electrode electrolyte interface through the polarization in order to store the energy. Graphene is quite helpful to be used as a supercapacitor material, which creates the graphene supercapacitors at the end. Due to its high specific surface area, high conductivity, open pore structure, production potential, and of course, low cost. By using graphene supercapacitors, we enable graphene to act as a battery. If we have sufficient supercapacitor, uh, supercapacitor layers in the shell of the hyperloop pod, then we would have extra space inside of the pod, much less weight and more efficiency. Furthermore, since one of the prim principles of hyperloop transportation concept is the fact that hyperloop is being created to be environmentally friendly and cost effective, using graphene in the energy storage system structure makes hyperloop even more environmentally friendly and a way cheaper. So, by and large, as Hyperloop Manchester, by connecting graphene and Hyperloop, we think that our graphene-related Hyperloop research will make the main difference between the contributions of the Manchester community and other groups across the world. Finally, finally, what we want to do is to combine two magical innovation concepts in only one project to make the best Hyperloop prototype in the world. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.